Hi, everyone. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Um, if this is your first time, just real quick, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm doing an extra video today because everybody seems to be worked up over the Super Bowl Sunday possible event. And I want to explain a few things specifically about it that actually are bothering me in terms of um, a forecast. But um, if you do like what you see, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free. Click on the subscribe button and you'll get notifications of future videos uh, as uh, I put them out at least once a day. And in the case today, twice a day. Now, one of the big problems that seems to be emerging, and the European has been on to this for a couple of runs now, and we're going to have to see if, if this uh, continues. We have, if we take a look on the European, this is the current uh, upper air today. And of course, you know, we have this system that's coming through this first clipper on, on uh, Monday morning. That's going to make a nice little low just offshore, but it's going to only produce uh, one to three inch amounts basically from northeastern Virginia into south coastal New Jersey, maybe grazing Long Island a little bit, and that's about it. Right behind it, there's a second system that's kind of preventing that from becoming anything more important. And of course, the second system itself doesn't look all that impressive. Uh, that's going to go by. Now, as we move through the week, you'll notice that there's pretty much a dominant feature here in the northern part of the jet stream, right in here. You know, you have, we see the darker blues. That uh, is, tell, that is um, below normal heights. The way the upper air works is that these numbers you see here, that's how many, that is zero to the end of it. That's how high you have to go into the atmosphere to uh, get to to 500 the 500 millibar level which is roughly always we kind of go with like the 18,000 foot level so along this line you have to go up 5,760 meters now as the air gets progressively colder and more dense uh, and the pressures become lower in the upper atmosphere uh, you have you wind up going to a lower height uh, to achieve that pressure so uh, when you get to the New York City area, you only have to go to 5,370 meters and so on. So the darker, the, what the blue signifies, because I know you guys ask this question a lot, um, what the blue signifies here is that uh, the heights are below normal. So in other words, it, it would be uh, colder than normal at that level of the atmosphere, where you see the yellowish orange um, the heights there are above normal so that the air is warmer. So you've, you've got, that's a, 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 it's, a, it's a fairly, some, I guess that's kind of an easy way to, to look at it. You have a ridge here in the west, but you've got this jet stream here in the north, and you've got these little short waves that come along. Well, here's the problem when it comes to whatever's going to try to happen for Super Bowl Sunday. You've got, you've got this little vortex here in eastern Canada, so that brings down some cold air. It pulls out. And then another one drops down from the north. And you'll notice, by the way, that in terms of what uh, you see here in the southern part of the jet stream, you can barely find anything. It's very weak. And this is different from what prior runs were showing. So if the southern part of that jet stream remains weak, the north is going to take over, which is what the, mod, what the European is doing. It's all up here in the north. So what do you get when you have something like that? You really don't get much of anything. Um, if we show you what the surface corresponds to on the European, um, let's let me see if I can, if it'll come out. There we go. But it, what the surface corresponds to on the European is basically a strengthening low here in the northern stream, and all you got is a cold is a, is a a cold front with cold air coming down behind it. And there's not really that much ahead of it. It's all in the north on the European. There's nothing in the south. Now, the GFS and the Canadian model are uh, different. But one of the things that I'm seeing with as far as the GFS is concerned is that uh, there is a, tr you know, every run seems to be a little closer, not quite there, but a little bit closer to the Europeans. Look, and by the way, it doesn't mean that the European is right. My original, the original idea was to take a primary, uh, a low coming out of the southwest and taking a primary into the Ohio Valley and redeveloping it. But if you notice here on the surface, on the new surface map on the GFS, it's there, but it's not, you know, you've got a low that it, it, it prints up at Eastern Lake Huron. Maybe there's another low here and you've got a little bit of a secondary 
uh, developing just offshore, which eventually the GFS wants to make as the primary low. Uh, and then, then it intensifies and it heads out toward Nova Scotia. The bottom line is that at least from what I'm seeing here at this point, and I said this earlier, either way, this is not going to be a major event. I mean, I think at best we're talking a moderate snow event if it happens. But if this northern part of the jet be, it becomes more important and the southern part becomes non-existent, it, it, it's kind of still there on the, on the GFS. You can still manage to pick out uh, something here in the southern part of the jet stream. You can see it, it's like right there. You know, the north is, is, is moving right along and there's a, a, a trough that's coming down in the north. You know, if the, if the southern part of that jet stream is, is very weak and it's all in the north, you're really not going to have much of anything here with regards to um, um, a system happening. You need to have that southern part of the jet definable uh, in order for a, an event to occur. Now, as we go later on into, into that week, there is something more definable that's, that's shown. Uh, the northern jet is still there, but you know, then the question becomes whether this thing that's behind it winds up getting squashed away, which is another, another issue. So I'll, I'll, I'll just get you, I'll, I'll go real tight on this and you can, you can see what it does on the surface. My own personal view is I still think that there's going to be something in that southern stream, but it's it's disturbing to me to see the European doing what it's doing. And it, and, and the thing is, it keeps getting stronger with the northern stream with every run. It's, it's not just that last night's overnight run showed it and then it just kind of disappeared. Um, it, um, it The fact it's showing it two runs in a row. I also throw in as another caveat the fact that the European has not been not done well this winter at all on a number of these things and you know I want to bear that in mind so I, I just want to put that out there N no one should be worked up into a frenzy over this either way because it does not look to be a big event to me it doesn't it just doesn't the dynamics aren't there for any kind of huge snowstorm and the other thing is uh, the winter the way it's been we just haven't seen any kind of deep lows. Last week's nor'easter was really the first one, and even that was not from a standpoint of depth. It was okay, but it wasn't anything, you know, outrageous. So uh, I just wanted to update you on that. As far as the Clippers, are, the Clipper is concerned, you know, you know, it's pretty much on course. That's a nice little tight low that forms, but you can see how limited the snow area is. You don't get any real development across Connecticut, Long Island, or northern New Jersey. It's in southern New Jersey, back to the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, where I think those play, those cities may wind up with a couple of inches. And then you've got the next clipper the next day sets up a warm front. Now, the models have been trending a little further south with this. You do have this warm front here and an area of snow ahead of it. You know, and that could be a coating to a couple of inches, but it's going to be north this time around. It'll be uh, north of Route 195 in New Jersey. And by the way, somebody... Uh, when I say route, route 195 runs east-west from the Jersey Shore over toward Trenton, 95 runs north, mostly north-south. So I'm referring here uh, to 195, which goes across. 95 goes that way, okay? So just to uh, point that out. Um, I know my road, so if I say 195, I mean 195. If I say 95, I mean 95. So we'll leave it at that. Um, have a great day. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the red button. The subscription is free. And you'll get notified of all the latest weather videos. Download my app uh, and subscribe to my forecast. Uh, just a buck a month for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, and the Hudson Valley. Everybody have a great evening.